Hey guys, I just wanted to share my story with you. Um, just warn you of the risks and stuff that, you know, doctors are trying to keep from you and saying, oh, this is rare, this is rare, when in reality it's not. Um, so, May 24th of this year, I had gotten a septoplasty with a turbinate reduction. Um, I had discussed about the whole, oh, you know, can I just do the septoplasty? Because I didn't really know what the turbinates were anyways, and I felt it was just my bone that was creating the issues. Sorry, I have really dry face. Um, but my surgeon basically told me, well, not basically, he did tell me, no, if we're going to do this, we're going to do both. You know, otherwise the septoplasty alone isn't beneficial. I am finding out otherwise that people who have only had the septoplasty were much better. Um, he was like, so we're going to do the turbinate reduction and the septoplasty together. Um, so I, I did ask him what a turbinate reduction really is and what it is he's going to do. He had explained to me that he would go through and just cauterize a couple of spots on my turbinates to shrink them down a little bit. Um, he, he really made it sound like it was nothing extreme and he used the words just a little bit. Um, I even had asked his receptionist when I was filling out the paperwork what it meant exactly and she explained this exact same thing. Um, now, mind you, when I did fill out the paperwork, I know on the form itself that I signed and got my records of, I did only agree to a septoplasty. Um, and I have the paper, like I have all my records, which isn't a bunch because I hadn't been going there for long. But um, yeah, I only agreed to a septoplasty. And... Uh, so I got the surgery May 24th. Um, he had briefly talked over things with me. Mind you, I had a local anesthetic. I had no sedation whatsoever. That was my choice. Um, so if he was going to do any extra work, he had every opportunity to let me know or ask me, whatever it may be. Um... So I'm getting the surgery, and the surgery did take quite a few hours. I believe I was there from 10 a.m. until like, gosh, they finally took me back around 11, and I feel like I was still back there until like 4 or 5 p.m. Anyways, um, yeah, so got the surgery, and it, you know, my nose felt like crap of course you know I was expecting that um but I literally could not breathe out of it at all but you know I took into consideration there is packing in there yada 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 and I remember him saying at one point oh well you can try breathing through it now and me not feeling anything at all I figured again it was just you know the swelling, all this stuff, and, you know, that's what he said, was like, oh, okay, well, try again in a couple weeks, so, um, time had gone by, two weeks, wasn't feeling better, I think it was around a week and a half, maybe it was two weeks, that I did get my smell back, and my taste. Um, so that wasn't gone for too terribly long. Um, but yeah, and time just had progressed. And I felt like with time, I started to get worse. Um, I, I wasn't able to breathe through my nose at all still. Um, there was no 
sensation of air through my nose. Um, but it was nice because in the beginning, at least, I was sleeping for like 10, 12 hours, which was great. I mean, but now dealing with this and it getting worse, I am going days without sleep. Um, yeah, so two, a month had gone by, still in bad shape, still couldn't sensa feel a sensation through my air or through my nose, and I kept seeing the surgeon. He said, keep giving it time, keep giving it time. And in this process, I had found out about something called empty nose syndrome. Um, I had brought it up to him and he's like, oh no, I, I you don't have empty nose syndrome. Da -da -da -da. And he was just kind of real arrogant about it. Like, you know, he didn't do that. And I asked him point blank, I was like, well, how many people have you worked with or done work on that do have empty nose syndrome? And he was like, I can't remember, I think he said four. And this man has been doing work for 40 years. And um, for whatever reason, he felt the need to add, oh, they were also elderly people who had a lot of work done. And he said that one girl that was on the younger side, that it was her fault because she was snorting her pain meds. I don't know how true that was, but that's just what he told me. Um, so, and then, you know, I continued to see him for another month and I just wasn't getting any answers. Um, he just kept saying, let it heal, blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, dude, this, everybody else is healed. Why am, why am I still feeling bad? Why do I feel worse than I did before? Um, so two months had gone by and I had enough. I decided that I was going to go get a second opinion from another ENT. And when I went into this place in Kenai, um, which is the only ENT place in the peninsula of Alaska, Kenai Peninsula, and I had gone in. And I had let them know that I wanted to sign a release of records to send to the new ENT place, as well as to get my own personal records. Um, she's, the receptionist was a little weird about it. She's like, okay, well, this is probably going to take a couple weeks or so to get your records. And I'm like, well, that's weird because... I've never had that happen before and I haven't been going there that long and sorry about that. And she had told me that it just was her working and that there's a lot to do and she'd have to print everything up, mind you. I had not been going there that long. So there was not that much to be printed out. Um so I was like, okay, well, can the other ENT place that I'm going to be going to, are they going to be able to get my records? She said, yeah, oh sure, we could send those over there. No issues. I'm like, okay. So, mind you, my new ENT appointment was supposed to be scheduled for the next week. Um, I leave the office of the place where I was trying to get my records and I had missed a phone call from the surgeon who worked on my nose. He called me, I called him back, and he was like, hey, I just noticed that you did a sign a release form, and I just want to know why. Um, I wish I hadn't explained to him why, because it's none of his business, but I was like, well, I think you have been negligent in my care. I don't feel like you've actually listened to me at all. Uh, just, he really didn't, like, he basically would just sit there with me. And stare at my chest a lot of the time. 
and just not give me any answers and then laugh at me when I'd bring up the idea, hey, is this possibly empty nose syndrome? Um, and then, you know, eventually it had gotten to a point where he was just like, well, you know, you know more about it than I do. I'm like, okay, well, that's comforting. Anyway, um, yeah, so he basically called to interrogate me about why I was wanting my records and who I was sending them to, um, which I thought was extremely strange and why would a surgeon feel the need to question me about why I want my own records. So, um, yeah, he was like, okay, well, that'll take a couple weeks. I'm like, all right, yeah, I know your reception story told me and we get off the phone, he's real cold, he's real just non-caring and so the next week comes and I go see my no new ENT. They still had not received my records, so I call the place again. She's like, oh, we sent them over, just real snarky-like. And I'm like, well, they do not got them. She's like, well, I'll send them over again. I waited a couple hours. They still had not received them. Um, so anyways, I saw the new ENT and... He says, well, I can't see anything from this point of view, so let's get you another CT scan of your nose. So I go get that CT scan done, and, you know, um, I, I ask for the CD of my images because I know sometimes it could take a while before the doctor gets the results and all that stuff like that. And so I get the CD and I pop it in the laptop immediately. And I could see that there was a lot done to my turbinates. Um, so I know this person through Facebook in an empty nose syndrome group. And I wanted to get his opinion because he could read CT scans. Um, so... I decided to send him the images and he, I was like, well, can you like tell what's going on or what had been done? And he was like, well, for starters, you had out fracture done. Never knew what that was. Never heard of it. Never had my surgeon say anything about it. So I'm like, okay, well what is that and he explains to me it's where they go through and they crush your turbinates um crushing the bones inside them and pushing them back like wow my surgeon said nothing about that um so oh and i also have an adhesion in my left side which i'm going to be for, you know, just to see if it makes any sort of difference. Um, I'll be having it removed or released September 13th of this year. Um, anyway, he says I have out fracture and that he couldn't tell much else. Um, finally, I talked to the doctor and he just tells me, well, you know, I don't, unfortunately, I can't see anything that's causing your issues, but so this could be nerve damage or empty nose syndrome um so basically i'm like well crap so i am just at this point had been fed up so um i was in anchorage alaska with my family and my husband was still in soldatna working and I had asked him to just stop by into the uh, to stop by into the clinic to get my records to try to get my records from them. Um, he went in. He was like, "I want my wife's records," and she immediately gave them to him. Uh, so he got my records and he brought them back to Anchorage for me to go over. And. My paperwork, the ones that I signed agreeing to the surgery, was only septoplasty. In the paper of risks, there is nothing on empty nose syndrome at all. 
no risk, no, nothing about rare risks or anything like that. Um, and then I got to the paperwork of every, everything he had done through surgery. Now it makes sense why they didn't want to give me my records, but, um, he did bilateral submucosal resection which is if you're not familiar with it is where they go through and they actually remove some bone from your turbinates he did the out fracture as well which i had explained where they crush the bones and they move they move your uh turbin they push your turbinates back um he also used a copulation tool and what that is is it's basically used as a nerve block for people with severe pain issues um, but they take this wand and whatever it is they're doing it to they take this wand and they burn it from the inside out um, so he used that and on top of that he used cartery Then, on top of that, it says two incisions were made on the interior of my inferior turbinates. And he used some sort of tool to debulk or something like that. I'm like, I have no idea what that means and I don't want to find out because I already feel miserable. Um... So I find out all that stuff and I call him. I call the surgeon and mind you, he had given me his personal number after I had my surgery done and I asked him point blank. I was like, why did you do all this extra stuff? And he was like, well, I just thought it's what you needed. And I was like, but why this this isn't what we agreed to you didn't say anything about any of this and he just repeated himself that he felt it was what I needed and I told him I was like you know this is malpractice right and I was like I went through my records I only agreed to a septoplasty and you did all this extra stuff and he didn't say anything um so that was that and uh, you know I, I've been seeing this new ENT and he has told me multiple times just don't lose hope don't lose hope but you know I'm it's been over three months it's kind of hard to not lose hope at this point um, so if you have any positive stories I would love to hear them um, I mean I do have two small children I'm I've only been married for a year and I just feel like my life has turned around drastically. I'm not sleeping. I feel like I can't breathe. Um, so let's go over that for a minute. Basically what my symptoms are is I can feel no sensation of air through my nose. Um, my breathing always feels manual, not automatic. Um, I feel like no matter what I, what I do, any sort of big breath that I take is not giving me relief. Um, my throat is constantly, constantly dry. Um, just... The only other way to explain it is a complete nightmare. Um, but, uh, you know, I've been going to acupuncture just to see if that will help. I've done a couple chiropractor appointments, which were probably just, I, I don't know, I only went to two because 
I just didn't know if it was really worth it with how much I was having to pay and just some things he was explaining didn't make sense to me. So I'm like, oh, well, maybe not. Um, but I just wanted to share with you guys that this turbinate reduction is not worth it regardless of what is going on with you it is not worth it you try medications you try nasal sprays or even even i wish i would have done this beforehand go to an acupuncturist and they will be able to help you to find something with your sinuses and get to the root problem instead of going in for surgery um just really do your research um and i did i actually did talk with an attorney about this whole case and you know i had a lot of hope that this would get out there but um supposedly the law firm had lost a couple people that were working there and said they weren't able to take my case don't know if that's true but you know, it is what it is. Um, but just also keep in mind that brother, I think your brother's like, um, it's not worth it. And there are doctors who call themselves ENS specialist they're not. They are literally still performing these turbinate surgeries on the and on the side they're like, oh, try these implants, try this, try this. Don't just do not get a turbinate reduction. It's not worth it. Just get down to the main source. Like I said, acupuncture would be a great place to start. Don't make the same mistake that I did and I pray every single day that something changes like I believe in miracles um, I believe in God so strongly and I'm just praying that my prayers as well as all the other people I've had pray for me including my children that they will be answered um Life has been hard. I'm trying to push forward. My daughter's birthday is coming up this September. And so is my husband's. And it just it makes my stomach turn. And gives me a feeling of guilt that I am feeling like this. And that I feel like I'm incapable of not focusing on my nose. Because I, I can't feel myself breathing. And at first when people say that, they're like, well, you know, that doesn't sound too bad. But once you have it, it's it's nothing like a plugged nose. It's not like that. It's completely different. Um, but just empty nose syndrome is real. It is hurting people a lot of people and they try to say it's a very rare occurrence it's not it is not and there is a, such a lie but hey if you're religious or anything like that you know i will take any prayers um That's another thing that's been really hard is, you know, I have a son who is 16 months and then I have a daughter who's going to be turning seven and to literally have, hear your daughter cry out to God being like, God, please heal my mommy has been really hard. Um, but yeah, just. If you have any positive stories, please let me know.
um, and I'm not trying to be rude. I don't want to hear like your negative experiences and stuff like that because I know it's bad. I know it's really bad and I know a lot of people are hurt, but I, you know, I just don't want to hear someone saying, oh, I feel this way. I want to die every day and blah, blah, blah. I, I don't want to hear that. I want, I want there to be some hope, some positivity. So if you could do that, that'd be great. Um, but yeah, don't get the surgery. Don't. Do not get a turbinate reduction at all. The septoplasty, I don't know. I, I'm not sure. But turbinates, leave them alone. They're there for a reason. They do what they do for a reason to protect you. If they're acting a little obnoxious, like I said, go to an acupuncturist. Get to the root core of the problem don't just be like okay let's do surgery I don't care how good your surgeon is don't I don't care if they're your best friend don't take care of you 